This is Al Fritch at EarthHealing.info. We are having in our video today the uh, ceremonial reclaiming of the bone fragments that were at Marquette University for almost 200 years. Uh, fragments of the great explorer Pierre Marquette. And those are being returned to his grave. And there will be a ceremonial including uh, Native Americans uh, who will reintroduce and reinter these uh, fragments to their original spot. Uh, Pierre Marquette is a Jesuit, and, but there are another, no other Jesuits that are buried here. He was running a mission that started in 1671 and uh, continued after he was gone when he died in 1675. But the reinterment of those bones are of great importance to those who loved him and want to see the honor that he deserves. The first event was on Friday, June 17th. It was called the Honoring, an outdoor concert and welcome music by Jesuit Jim Boynton and his friends uh, at or very near the Museum of Ojibwe Culture. Our cat back where he's always wanted to be. That'll happen tomorrow, so we're gonna do a little concert tonight. We got Danny Gillespie here from the island of the beavers, and then Charlevoix. We got over here, St. Agnes Roots all the way. Gordy Russ is a, uh, a quarter Goodrow and a quarter Boynton, so that's pretty good. And then, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Jim Boynton. I am uh, not only a Jesuit, I'm also a member of the Sioux Tribe of Chippewa Indians. It's great to be here, and uh, this is my hometown. There's no better place on earth than St. Agnes. Marquette and I are in agreement of that. So. <laughs> Okay. Key of G, boys. This is called the uh, this is called the French song. Since Father Marquette was French, we might as well do this. dreams on the hillside and I still hear your voice though you're gone I hear at my door the love songs in the wind and it brings back sweet memories of you now when the sun says hello The second event was in the morning of Saturday the 18th, and it was a sunrise traditional pipe Ashtonami uh, ceremony at the Mission Bay adjacent to the Museum of Ojibwe Culture. <laughs> Oh, 
them, we pass the tobacco to them and ask them to begin our day with us and spend the day with us. And all those good things that we share here today, you'll take them to the Creator. When we're done, at the end of the day, we'll blow those whistles again and release him. Let him go. We do that because eagles roost at night, that's where they find their safety. If we ask him to stay here with us, he'll stay and put himself at risk during that night. So we ask, we release him and let him go. So at this time, we're gonna have uh, the woman come up and uh, water have a water ceremony. Uh, water ceremony is a uh, is a women's uh, uh, 
teaching of women's responsibility. And, uh, this is Aki uh, Nova, the Four Day Quay, Earth, Wind, and Fire Woman. Um, to protect and care for the water. We give birth, we're made of water. But sometimes a lot of people don't realize too, and it's just something to think about what we do is every morning, think about when you are taking a shower, brushing your teeth, you know, drinking coffee. If it wasn't water, you would not be doing So just remember how important the water is. So give a little thanks. So we sing the water song, a healing song, a thank you song, that we're very grateful to be here, for them to be here, for all the waters to be here. We sit on the Great Lakes.
we take a pinch or put a pinch of tobacco in there, we ask Bungie a little bit. Some of us don't smoke regularly. So, we have to smoke all that's put in there because you're asking us to smoke those, say those prayers. The third event was the actual reburial service and ritual at the Museum of Ojibwe Culture, and uh, it was at the very site of where Marquez is buried.
And when he came back to St. Agnes in a birch box, it was the native peoples again that buried him right here where the mission was. It was the native peoples that buried him. Some Jesuits were there, some Europeans were there, but this is what the Anishinaabe people wanted to do, and it's what they did. The mission was then abandoned. In 1877, Pierre Grandin was clearing this land for Mr. Murray, discovered a cross, discovered the grave, did some digging, and found the grave of Father Marquette. They went and got the local pastor, Father Edmund Yocker. Bought him down here, and in an 1877 kind of a way, they did an excavation. The bones were found. Father Yocker kept some of those bones. A few were put back here, and this purchase, this was purchased by the city of St. Agnes, and they established this monument. But the majority of the remains were sent to Marquette University in Milwaukee, where they have been in the archives since the 1800s. About 15 years ago, Father Al Fritch, who was a Jesuit right here, Father Al Fritch wrote to me. I was on Mackinac Island working at St. Anne's, and he talked about Father Marquette wanting to come back to St. Agnes. And that started a 15-year-long journey. Shirley Sorrells and I have met a number of times. John Magnuson was huge. Tony, Rondon, Russ Rickley. This was finally the year we wrote to Marquette University. We wrote to the superior of the Jesuits in the Midwest. His name is Father Carl Kaiser. He's a youper. And he said, is this what the Anishinaabe people want? Tony says yes. <coughs> so we asked, and in March we went to Marquette University, got the bones, <coughs> Tony made the box, we brought them back. So here we are.
was focused for several decades on some respectful way to celebrate the fragments of Pierre Marquette. The best was to support the Native Americans who, went, after we had alerted them, desired that these fragments be returned to the burial site itself, returning home. But how, what is bigger if he was a person that went way beyond that lone location? Maybe it's because the location itself can be celebrated and that Marquette can be imitated and modeled for the spirit that he had with the people and the places and the plants and the animals of those places. What can be said except that what is local can now become something that is global and eternal. If you desire more information, we recommend that you go to the forthcoming documentary, which will be available at the website of the Museum of Ojibwe Culture. This is Al Fritz at EarthHealing.info. Come and visit us sometime.